Radio. Produced yeah. by my guy that's sitting in front of me, man, Sir Jinx What's in the up, building. Man? What's up with you, man? Get up on the mic so, so we can hear yeah, you. That was some good days, man. That's, that's a soundtrack, you know, Platinum's, the, that How to Survive went up. That's yeah. the title track of Boys in the Hood. So I, that, was, that was a dope How song. did you make that joint right there? Well, actually, when I worked with Cube, I, I, I used to be in the studio all the time. And then he'd just pick beats. Yeah. Like, he'd go in the studio by himself and just pick the beat. Uh-huh. So, like, No Vaseline, that beat was already made. It was just in an archive of beats. Okay. And then he ended up, the engineer would just bring up songs. Okay. And then he'd be like, well, I like that one. Can you change this? Can you do this? And that's basically how, uh, how to survive in South Central. Because it was supposed to be another track, I, I remember. But uh, we end up, sometimes we work... And make three, four songs for one idea. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, one of them make it. And that made it. And was that song, after he heard the beat and he made the song, Was he? did he make this song specifically for the movie? Yes. He did? Yeah. Okay. They, they brought us in to do the soundtrack. Like, okay. Okay. Like, yo, we, we went, like, we. I did Higher Learning with him, uh, the soundtrack with him on that. And uh, we, we did a few other songs. Uh that that was in movies. Yes, you yes. know what I'm saying? And that wasn't that was unheard of back then. Yeah. At so least let's, us. let's take it back to the very beginning. So CIA with my, with my mother and father man. <laughs> no, no. Music oh, okay. music oh, beginning. Okay, okay, music okay, beginning. Okay. No, no, no. We don't want to go back to the <laughs> back to the womb. Not back to the womb. Not back to the womb. <laughs> so CIA. Right. That was the group, right? Right. So when you guys was doing your thing, did you guys pattern yourself after after the Beastie Boys? Because it sounded um, like it. I, I would say that we were inspired. Okay, okay. And um, we were just as rambunctious. Um, they were white. We wasn't. Yeah. You know, and... Um, Did you know they were white when you was yeah, following? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew... I'm a, I'm a hip-hop head, so... Yeah. Just like how you have all the dudes that mumble rap sound the same. Yeah. It, it was kind of the same thing. Like, we picked up from each other, you uh-huh. know, to build and go forward, so... Um, we were young and we were younger than them, but we wasn't drinking beer and doing yeah. all that, but we was still kind of rambunctious. So at the end of the day, that, that, that was the direction because it was no gangster music then. Yeah. It was only, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was your inspiration. No, that was, that BC was it. Boy was the next level. Oh, okay. I got you. Or, or we'd have been, when I'm standing in the gym and I'm I got you. You, 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 you. You'd have been Melly Mel right, or right. that stuff. We would have okay. been in that direction. Or, you. or, you know, like the, the Lonzo's and, yeah. and, uh, and, and that world. Yeah. And we were younger than them. We wanted to go forward. So yeah. um, that, that inspired us. And uh, Q was inspired. Um, and KD. Uh, and, and, and me, Dre, and all of us was involved. Yes, know. yes. So let's get into... Let's take it way back and let's play one of the songs. Let's play Illegal. Oh, I like Illegal. That was that was a joint right there. One of my favorites from uh, CIA. Because so. Illegal got some got a code in it. Okay. That, uh, so we're gonna play. Oh, we're gonna play it and then we're gonna talk about the code. So let's get into right, it, man. Right. This is CIA Illegal by Labor Radio. Come on, you back to just the essence, the beginning, like us trying. I hear us trying. That that that's the best part of hip hop is trying to be great. And I I just hear we were trying. You know, a lot of rappers came out and and didn't try as hard and, and didn't go as far. You know, and yeah. when I hear those, is is like a, I'm a happy dad. You know, like I'm, <laughs> I'm like my boys, yeah, my yeah. boys. I will still play that. But the funny thing is uh, that record. Um, I remember one time I saw Sir Mix a lot. Right. Yeah. So, and on that record, uh, Crew in Action uh, was a song called My Posse. Yeah. So, Ice Cube is thinking, dancing, drinking, dancing, singing, oh, my singing. Shit. So now you start listening to Posse on Broadway. Sound, That's the cadence. Uh, it starts sounding a little different. And then yeah. Cube also did it with. Uh, with easy, would slow down and hit a dip and continue my tripping. It was the same era. Same, yes. And when Sir Mitchell I said hi to me, I said he did steal my record. <laughs> Why would you know me? Why would you know me? Why would man? you know who I am? Why you know me? Like I, I'm looking at you, like my posse's on bro, hey. And and uh, uh, we just knew that uh, we were on to something. You inspired him. 
I like that. <laughs> but it, it, it was, but that was how we did it. I mean, we yeah. got it from something, I mean, you know. Yeah. But Q made that up, so okay, I, I, you gotta go into his head and, and say, and why did he do that? And he did it a few times, so it's a code in it. That's yeah. why I said it's a code in it because he did it for Easy E. He did it right there on illegal and. Uh, we did my posse. I yeah. assume we did that before posse on Broadway. I believe so. I'm trying to think now. I'm, I'm going to go back and look at the tape, but but I, I believe. But if I, I do, if I land, I land. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah. why didn't crew and action kind of take off? You guys did the EP with a few songs, and then after that, then you guys didn't do anything really after that, and then Q went on to NWA. Why didn't you guys, like you three, actually stick and, and kind of do more projects? Everybody separated. Yeah. So when you look at NWA, NWA was not supposed to be a rap group. NWA was like a compilation. Like yes. Niggas with attitudes. That's that's basically what it was. That's how you had, you know, the KD and um, Easy and Chip and Ren and all these people. And we came together as yeah. niggas with attitudes. So nobody knew that was going to take off because you got to remember... NWA had other kind of songs on it, something to dance to. Yeah. It had techno kind of other stuff. So the direction was still trying to be figured out. So we did put out another record. It was a parody record where we were just cussing our faces off. And um, <laughs> and and we, we were still CIA, but we was going CIA more into the easy direction and not into the Lonzo Crew Cut direction. Yeah. So we did that with Crew Cut and Lonzo. So when Dre started wanting to leave, he took us with him. Okay. So... And he kind of divided everything. It was like, oh, well, I can use Jinx. I, I can use Cube, you know, and, and that's how it went. You know, just like with Ren and and uh, what was the name of the group? Um, Chaos. And it had DJ Train in it and it had uh, the homie Chip in it. Um, so and pretty much this, this is kind of like the all-star lineup of right, right. the whole entire team. They said, I'm going to pick this one, this one, and make you five, and boom, we got a, right. we got a group. So right. why wasn't you in NWA? Because uh, I, I wasn't like that. Okay. I, I had other stuff going on, and um, you know they're a little older than me a little bit, but I just, I just was I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to talk like that. Yeah. You know, I, I had other artists that I thought I was gonna be working on and stuff like that, but I was there, like every video, every everything from the DOCs, the Michelle A's, the everything. I was there, but I didn't push myself out just to do anything. Yeah, you know, I you needed to have a spot, and I didn't have a spot. So let me tell you when my spot started is when Cube left. Okay. So I, at some point, I'm glad it, that didn't happen that way for me. It happened because you'd have been stuck. I would have been stuck. I got you. I got you. So by the grace of God, you didn't do that, and now you went on that ride and, and right. did and did everything with the, with else. the America's Most Wanted record. Yeah. Like, you know. So you can say I learned how to do beats in, in a month or two because yeah. that happened really fast. So before, before, and we'll get into more of the American Most Wanted stuff, but before that, you wasn't really doing production? Yeah. You was? Yeah. Okay. I, I was doing art music. Uh, I was working with Dell and, uh, you know, and, and a couple other people and a lot of people, man. Some of the people that I work with don't even rap no more. Yeah. Like, they like yeah. agents now. Yeah, like, yeah. they moved on. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but, well, yeah, yeah. So I, I work, I was, I, I was the one with the equipment. Yeah, okay. So everybody that came over, I would work with everybody. So like that 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 scene in the movie when Dre got kicked out, he came to your house and the, you had equipment and he was in there practicing his DJ. Oh, that's how they made it look. Yeah. yeah. Was that is that is that true or no? No. It, it is true that I had equipment for my people, but they just made the movie faster. Okay. Okay. Cuz Dre did have his own equipment, you know, yeah. but they just made it look like if that was my bedroom that was my turntables, but at the end of the day, you know, him and Steve Yano doing the stuff for uh, the Rhodium yes. and stuff like that, Steve would bring all that equipment. Okay. So I had my equipment, but it was probably janky, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, Dre had real equipment, like real 1200. And did you introduce Ice Cube to Dre? Right. So you're the, con you're, you're the connection to those two meetings. Right. Okay. Okay. And um, why don't and maybe you don't care about this, but why don't you get more credit for your involvement in the evolution of the beginning of West Coast hip hop? Ah oh, man, I, I I don't know. I mean, do you ever think about that? Nah, you don't care because I'm good. 
I know you are. That's I why. Was, that's that's a, why you here. A rich shit. nigga, man. I made a gang of fucking money. I don't really give a fuck about no labels when you get paid. Who the fuck? That saved my ass for real. Yeah. Because yeah. certain things I didn't done wrong. I was living my life. I'm glad it. Yeah. Because it would have been on front page. Like some of the shit I did. Like oh. That's true. That's true. I get you. So I'm behind the You scenes. flew under the radar to, right, to right, be right, able to right, do your right, thing. Right, that makes sense. Right. So right now we're gonna get into a song. One of the greatest diss songs of all time. It's in the top two or three, two or of, three. of all time. Uh-huh. And uh, we're gonna play it and then we're gonna talk about it when it uh-huh. after we play it. Right. No Vaseline, man. Ice Cube. We here with Sir Jinx, man. White Label Radio. Let's get it. Vaseline, one of the greatest diss songs of all time, man. We here with Sir Jinx, the OG in the building, man. Still here, man. He produced that joint. Before we get into that joint, when did you know Ice Cube was leaving the group before he left the group? Yes. So you had to sit down. He said, yo, Jinx, I'm I'm, I'm done with this shit. I'm out. Yeah. And And, and he also had a conversation with me and KD to say he was going to be in the group. He asked us, is it cool? So when he got in the group, he said, "I'm a, I'm a, because y'all, because y'all was a group. So out right. of respect, he asked he, us. Yeah. And then when he left the group, he said, "You know, what? I'm done with this shit. I'm, I'm out." And did he have a plan? Did he, did he, did he jump out this ship? Nope. He didn't have a plan. I don't think so. It don't seem like it, it don't seem like he had a plan, but it seemed like it worked out for him. The, the crazy thing is, um, what the, what's his name? Sam Sever. Sam Sever. Yes. He was supposed to produce the record. At okay. First. And he didn't show up to the meeting. And then he was out there with Chuck D, and Chuck D said, I'll do it. So now, can you... That's so, how fast it was changing. Can you... There's some rumors out there. I, I've been I've been wanting to ask this question for 20 years, and Cube hasn't walked in the door yet, but hopefully he'll come on the show one day. But is it true that when he left the group, a lot of West Coast producers didn't want to fuck with him because NWA, and it, was, nah. it wasn't that? Nah. He... He didn't go to New York because he didn't have no 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 love in, on the West Coast. Nah, nah. He went to New York, I think, because Chuck D was on top of the goddamn mountain. Okay. Who else was gonna be on top? Because of the he said the way he said it. In, Who in, in, could have helped Ice Cube? He said he happened to see Chuck D in the in the office right. because Sam because Sam how. Sever didn't show up. Right, right. So, right. and but who could have helped? Who could have helped him? I mean, Chuck D was at the. You no, know I'm at saying that in point. the West Coast. I don't know. Nobody. That's why it turned out the way it did. Because at that time, it was only NWA, Lonzo, and those dudes kind of on, on the outs but or whatever. But it wasn't like people were siding with, no, because nobody didn't know their beefs. Okay, okay. It, it wasn't like okay. social media. They, yeah, they, yeah, didn't, yeah. they didn't know they wasn't getting along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, when, okay. when they went and when NWA was doing their shows without Cube, the, the crowd didn't know. They just assumed that man, he wasn't there that day. No, they, they just didn't know. They yeah. didn't know who was doing the songs and... You know, ah, I got they, you. I got the, you. The facial part wasn't attached to the music. It was just the music. It was just the music. So if you got up there and did this part, they wouldn't know. They just assumed that you was you was doing it on the record. Right, right, right. Okay, that, that makes sense. I didn't know that. Right. I well, didn't that's know that. how I take it. And then, so after he left and he got with Chuck D, you kind of got thrown <laughs> in the fire as the one of the main producers, the Bond Squad, and you, right? <clears throat> well, he, <clears throat> excuse me. He, uh, Cube. I remember he called me and was like, "You want to go to New York?" And he didn't call me to say, "Do you want, do you, do you want to help me produce my record?" It wasn't that conversation. Oh, he really? said, "Do you just want to go?" So you wasn't even. I wasn't even supposed to be producing or nothing. He okay. didn't know. He didn't know what kind of beats I had. Yeah. So when I got there, then I started playing beats, and me and Eric Sattler, Eric Sattler, kind of walked me down, like, and helped me out because I went there. I, I wanted beef. I was like, yo, fuck these niggas, man. It's West Coast. Really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm a b-boy, so it's not nothing hatred about it. It's a battle. It's, it's, I'm it's very competitive when it comes to this music. I'm serious. So I wanted to go there and, and really go at them and, and actually learn from, you know, you can learn from an enemy, you know, yeah. if, if they uppercut you or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Eric Sadler was like, hey, knock that off. Yeah. I feel, so I feel your tension. How was your <laughs> relationship with Dre during this time? Cause that was your cousin, so it, it wasn't no. We was making money, you know. It wasn't. It wasn't no back and forth. So when I came back from um from New York, we did the record. Drake came right over there to listen to it. But guess <laughs> what? There was no windows There was no disses. There was no yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, we moving forward. Yeah. We, we don't want to do that. 
Yeah. So then later, you know, they kind of came with the Benedict Arnold stuff and oh, all yeah. that stuff came later. But that was after America's Most Wanted, you know. Yeah. And we was like, the whole world was like, y'all not gonna say nothing. And that's when you put out No Vaseline. No, that's when we did Jack and for Beats. That's true. Okay, Jack and for Beats came, and then you after know, Jack and for Beats was supposed to be the diss. Really? Right. But we was gonna put niggas for life. Uh-huh. The, the beat for niggas for life. Give me that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But since they made the, the track up, they denied us uses of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we used D nice. So nobody got it. So at the end of Jacket for Beats, you hear stop, 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 stop. stop, stop. Surprise, okay. Surprise, niggas. But he didn't. They, 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 nobody got it. So it was like a whack. That makes throw that makes sense now. Cube. Yeah. So when we did de- death certificate, that's why I start off with oh yeah. Oh, you think I forgot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes in because he he didn't want to uh, retaliate. He didn't want to do it. And when he made that song, were you in the studio when he recorded the vocals? Yeah. So when he first went in the booth and actually started to spit his first lines, what was your reaction? What was the studio? I already knew it. Oh, you already knew it? I already knew it. So it wasn't a surprise. What no. was the room's reaction when they first started hearing him go in? There wasn't no room. It wasn't, it wasn't no people in the room? No. Nah. It was just you and him and the engineer? DJ Pooh. DJ okay. Pooh and Bobcat. Okay. We didn't do big sessions. Okay. Like, that's some new shit. Okay. Okay. We didn't do that. We was in the locker room. We was in the operating room. You feel me? Yeah. We was in the operating room. So, you know, everybody is quiet. Yeah. Search. Engineer got to yeah. listen to what we're saying. And back then, you know, everybody can touch the, the boards and stuff like that, uh-huh. you know. But it was a little like, don't touch that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you had to be real good with the engineer. Everybody had to be on the same vibe. And uh, when when he did the No Vaseline, I was, uh, he was like, it's that time. And when it came out, were you guys, did you guys expect the impact as far as like us as a fan in the world to say hey oh, no we knew you, you, you knew that we knew you knew you had something we knew what was we, we, we knew what was gonna happen what did Drake say when, when he first heard it uh, he, he, he laughed he laughed at it yeah don't play it around him though <laughs> I know I heard a couple of niggas get they get snatched out the car trying to pull up on Drake playing no Vaseline really don't do it don't even be playing around with it what was the crazy? I mean, now he's light. Of course, you know, of course. He, I mean, he's, he's a billionaire now. I mean, come right, on, right, it's, right, it's, right, it's right. water under the bridge, right? right. You know, but, but I still think it got a little scar under his eye. Of like, course, I still yeah. think he, he, you can't play with him. <laughs> you ain't gonna play with that. You better off playing. Uh, what's his name? Lou Skywalker's this. Yeah, like that. Because <laughs> that, light, that, that was lightweight. <laughs> yeah. That was lightweight. Don't play nobody. That, that was lightweight. <laughs> But I'm getting my bread. So that's what he liked about my situation is that I'm still getting my bread. And that's how it was. And and the way that the song was, it wasn't disrespectful. It wasn't calling people like how the diss records are today. It wasn't disrespectful. It wasn't. It, it was, it was, it was about disrespectful. The, man, the matter at hand. Put it, a bullet in his temple is not disrespectful? But that's not to him. <laughs> that's not to Dre. Oh, Dre, to Dre. Not to Dre. It, I, got not to I, I got you. It's not to Eric. I got you. I got you. He was got mad you. at Jerry yeah, the yeah. whole time. He was like, "You gonna let him, you gonna let this dude break up my crew?" Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's how he felt. But you know, when you like the, with the Rand stuff, I, I, I don't think it, it's like it was no beef. Yeah, it was just that it was rap competition. Yeah, but the the Jerry Heller was really he was really upset in him. Yeah, and when you guys are making America's Most Wanted, what was the first song recorded? If you can remember, and did it make the album? Yes. I think it was uh, America's Most Wanted. Was it? Right. Did the title come? Did, did, did Cube had a title from the Gator or something right. that he had to create? He already had when, the title. Whenever we make music, we try to make a a, a theme. Oh, uh, okay. Follow this theme. Okay. Because the inserts was supposed to be longer than that. It was supposed to be him turning into America's Most Wanted. That's why Endangered Species and all these other songs. So he was turning into America's Most Wanted. But I started getting a little drawn out, and then we just did the drive-by, because the drive-by was supposed to set up to the girl, and you can't fade me, once upon a time in the project, gangsta fairy tale, she had the kid. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to have been, it's, we was going too far. So, <laughs> American Most Wanted was a concept album? Right. Really? Right. God damn, I never knew that. Right. Shit, I'm learning something. This is amazing. But we took it down and, 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 and assembled it 
in another kind of way but it yeah. was supposed to be a long story yeah, like, yeah, kind yeah. of like yeah with three three feet high and rising that's what i was like really uh, long. so it was gonna be like a comic kind of book not like a comic book but a, but like a story yeah, on yeah. how he became america's most wanted and was that inspired by three feet high and rising or just inspired by the overall storytelling just my part that's your part. I, I was dead i was i was really on them so people really? were like yo james oh you made up the inserts i'm like nah 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 de la soul was doing that they did that first and i got it from them ah. and then i made the insert because your album came out right after that oh uh, way after it because de la soul was 88 i, I know this is 90 90 you're right, right so right. it's a couple years yeah right, okay right, right. a couple years so this is uh, this is dope. This is dope, man. This is dope. I love it. As I love it. As long as you got it. the questions, it's dope. I'm a hip hop fan, yeah. man. I've been wanting to ask these questions for right. 25, 30 years, man. So let's get into one of my favorites off that album. It's Once Upon a Time. Oh, that's my produced by you. And uh that song Del? I I had they was giving me a, a, a production deal with, with Ruthless. Uh-huh. So I had a group called Rhythm. Uh-huh. And rhythm turned into Tajay and Adam. So oh, the mischief. So wait, they were Tajay was supposed to be on Ruthless Records, right? And on Once Upon a Time Project, he was supposed to be on that song too. No, it was my beat. Oh, it was your, oh, the, the I, beat. When I yeah, went I to New you. York, I, I you snatched took, him off the all beat the beats and, and gave him the cue. So wow. they was actually rapping on that first. Do you have the original? Nope. Damn. They'll tell you. Damn. Really? Yeah, they'll tell That's you. That's crazy. Tajay was, wow. I, and A plus. Tajay yeah. A plus was right. signed to Rufus. No. we were, oh, we're, they we're, were working on a deal. Right, right. Okay. They was going to give me a production deal I got and a you. label deal to, to deal with that, bring Yo-Yo and all the people that I was dealing with at the time, you know. But uh, when Cube left, he pulled the plug on all of it. So I couldn't do over there and then go back over there. Of course there. not. Of course right, not. Right, right, right. So let's get into Once Upon a Time right here on White Label Radio with Sir Jinx in the building. Let's go, Nifo. Who's the Mac? That's a classic right there. So during the talk break, we was talking about... Shout out to Son of Berserk, man, because everybody think that's DJ Pooh. That's Son of Berserk, man. So um, at the very beginning of that song, mm -hmm. we all thought it was DJ Pooh all this time. Right. But that's actually Son of Berserk. Son of Berserk, yeah. And we started talking about the bomb squad and I didn't realize until you just told me right now that Hank Shockley Hank and Keith Shockley didn't really actually hit no buttons produced it was more like the well, orchestrator I would say Keith could, could touch a couple of things but but Hank was more of an organizer more of an administrator that, that can you know kind of conduct the situation yeah. but um, um, Eric Sadler was, he was the man he, he was the guy he was the bomb squad at least to me and from what I saw and you was there pretty much every day, right. all day. Right. And, and he taught me things. They was using that S1000 or something. And I came with the SB12, and they looking at me. And our techniques was so different, but they worked so good together, you know. It, it made magic because when this album first came out, of course, we listened to it first, and then we looked at the credit. We said the Bomb Squad, Public Enemy. We're like, yo, they make the noisy beats, which works for Public Enemy, right. but it makes sense that you was in there bridging the gap to give them that soul and give us that West Coast bounce that we normally do. Well, yeah, I, I but I, I think Ice Cube did know what he want because he came from the same camp I came from. Yes. I come from. Yes. Uh, and so some things were a little bit over the top, but they were running, the, they was running the game at that point. So yeah. It's like getting a track from Teddy Riley. I mean, you know, you, you ain't going to be like, ah, I don't like that synth. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You're going to yeah. be like, oh, uh, New Jack City, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. I, I need that. So <laughs> let's go back to the timeline. When Cube told you guys, from when he told you, I'm out, fuck this, I'm leaving NWA, to the time y'all in the studio, how long was that? Was it like months? Was it a year? Was it, how long was it before y'all got question. rolling? Um, I, like, I always say five months. Five months. I, because we, we um, all that was in the summer of, w of what was going on in, in their world, and uh, we 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 produced um, America's Most Wanted in two months. Wait, so from February and it only March took you two months to make America to Most make Wanted. America's Most Wanted, right. and it came so out in April. You told me that when he left the group, he didn't have a plan, and then he went from not having a plan to within. Seven months, eight months. The dope shit about Ice Cube was that uh -huh. he was writing for so many people. Yeah. 
when he got to New York, he had a gang of raps. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense now. So he didn't have to like write from scratch. He had nah, music. Nah, he had a, a lot of them could and, have been Eric songs. Little uh, boys and girls, y'all love me. Come sit on the lap of Easy E. It could, it could be switched in seconds. That oh wow, that makes that all makes right. that makes sense now. But he took them all. Yeah, and he said, "I'm gonna do all of them, so they can't do not one of them." That's crazy. We knocked that down. And, quick. and, and did the fast turnaround was based on that as well too. He wanted right. to get it out because he wanted to get his shit out before they go right. and do their thing. Right, right, right. right. That's what I think. Yeah, really, he was ready to go. How did he get the deal? So, he, so the, the record deal, it was he. He wasn't signed. So y'all did the, y'all did the album without being signed. No, he was working with them, not being signed. Oh, cool. That's the, that's the, that's the reason why he left because he didn't have no paperwork and he didn't get no money. Yeah. So, so I'm saying Brian after, and what is it, Brian Turner and they just they signed him. They gave him a deal. You saw the goddamn movie. Yeah, but did, but they <laughs> did, did, did they give you the deal before you guys worked on America's Most Wanted? Or? He had to. Yeah. They weren't going to invest into a, a stray guy. Yeah, Priority Records already had like a bunch of artists on it before Dre and they and them knew, got there, and they knew that Ice Cube was writing all this stuff. But they knew that he gonna he gonna right, put out right, something. Right, right. So they just they 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 put all your chips on on him, and and it panned out. Well, it's just like any rap group when you got white people involved. Yeah. You know, they want to separate it to try to make the percentage different you know make they percentage 100 percent out of everybody not yeah, just 100 yeah. percent off of the group yeah they yeah. want 100 percent of everybody each one each yeah, one right each, each one. one so they each gave one. him his deal and promised him what they were supposed to give him and didn't do it they didn't do it how so now it's funny and you can't i, I know and you, that's, and you know record sales yes that's a lot of goddamn money in yeah. today's time yeah and I know you can't answer this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway because Cube is not here to. Ask, I'm asking. I'm gonna ask him this question as well too. But after coming from the NWA situation, why would he go into priority and have a similar situation happen to him with Brian and have to go in there and take a bat to walls oh, and shit? I, I don't think he thought Brian was the problem. Brian Brian was a, was was the uh, the middleman, not the the supplier. Okay. So he was like the Kaiser Sose. Like, yeah. you, you want to talk to him. Yeah. He wasn't the issue. The uh, issue was what the management of the other situation. Oh, uh, okay. So okay. that's all we had. He, what are you going to do? Go to Warner Brothers? Go to Epic? You know, where CBS? Where are you going to go? This is, you're out of the group. You're Bobby Brown. You're out the but group. But he didn't, so he didn't, think Brian, go? he didn't think Brian's a problem. But then after that, he realized, damn, Brian screwed me and I, I'm having the same situation and he walked up in there and, and, and right, told the office right, up and right, then right, right. And that was figured real. out. All that was real. Okay. That, that, was that you with really him? Happened. No. Okay. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I don't break nothing. <laughs> you stay under the radar like you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And, and did, he, had, he, had a, he had a team. I mean, Lynch Mob was deep at so one point. Lynch you, Mob was deep as as any organization. Like, we, we had, there's a lot of guys. You mentioned Yo-Yo. Did you bring Yo-Yo to Ice Cube? Or no, did they know? met each other. They met each other. Okay. Because I know you said you had Yo-Yo ahead of time and right. the production deal or whatever. Right. And then Tajay and those guys you Tajay. met through Dale. Dale, and right. which is Cube's cousin. Right. And was he around you guys with America's Most Wanted? Yeah. So you flew him out to New York and he actually... I think he was there. Okay. But I, I uh, Dale was definitely there. He was okay. There. He was around. He wrote uh, Gangster Prairie Tale. Oh, he did. Right. Okay. Okay. And and what, a lot of songs. Yeah. What happened to KD? Because KD had a dope ass song, and he was on Lynch Mob, and then he just kind of uh, KD. You know, he was doing his thing. I mean, but if you don't have a machine behind you, and you don't have the same people that do the same thing for you, then it's kind of hard to say why that didn't happen that way. Just like what you say was what's going on with me. Yeah. Why, why? Well, Jinx, yeah. why, why, why you ain't? I mean, but if if we don't have the same machine and we don't have the same people behind us, then obviously it's gonna be uh be a little bit different for yeah. everybody. You know, it's a bunch of guys that I worked with that um didn't even see the light of day. And then, you know, they can be mad, but at the end of the day, it, it, is what the world gave you. And he had a cold ass song. Katie had that cold ass song too, was dope. Well, Katie had some good yeah, stuff. Yeah, he, he had, had some good, good stuff. Good I, I like cash. Was it? I like them. Cash, cash, ass, and automobiles. Yeah, he said, uh, "What is it? Ass, <laughs> cash, and gas. Nobody yeah, rides right, for free. Right, right, right. Nobody right, rides right, right. for free. That's right. dope. So, did you guys? Once you guys finished America's Most Wanted and it was done, 
did you knew did you guys know it was special no you didn't did, so you guys didn't even no. you, you guys didn't anticipate the impact that it was gonna have when you came no. back home and you heard people bugging we thought and whatever. everything we did was dope okay so that wasn't that wasn't no different like you, that's coming off a straight Dr. Dre situation. Yeah, yeah. That's like getting traded from one team and going to another team. Yeah, yeah. And now you on the Lakers with LeBron. Yeah, so we, we like, yeah. oh, okay, we got LeBron now. Yeah, yeah. We don't even need them. We we really thought we was dope. I mean, I, I did. And then when did you realize it was bigger than what you thought? Uh, we went platinum in 14 days or something like that. So you have a platinum plaque in your house right now? Uh, nah, it's in storage. Really? I don't hang up pictures. Really? That's kind of like arrogant to me. Like looking at your trophies. That's kind of like not. So I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you on air right now. Can can can, can we borrow? Can you, can we put on the wall in here? Well, that's a lot of them. So can we can we can we? Shit, I, I got a lot of wall. Look, look, look at that whole wall with empty. Whatever. Can we can we can we go in your stores and can we borrow? Can you can you loan them to us? Well, I see what I can do. I know. Come I, on. I got a gold one or something. I Hey, hey, I'll I take that. I'll take that away. At least, Cause, at least. Because we, we, through all the records, we went gold first. Yes, of course. And then we went platinum. Yeah. So they make both out of all the records. There's two records out of all of them. Then you got your Ampex Awards. You got your BM, your, all these other different awards that we was getting. So when I walk around my house and I like to kick it, sometimes I don't like looking at old trophies. It might bring up bad, bad ideas. You I know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I loved everything I did, you know, because, you know, we went, I went on to, to work with Exhibit, the Restless albums and all those albums. Yeah, so yeah. We, the, those don't get hung up either. Yeah. You know, I got Michelle A albums, um, NWA albums. So let, <laughs> let, let us be your museum here. Yeah, like I can say, you can come through, put them on the walls, and you can tell people, hey, they over there, you can go see them, we can schedule visits and whatnot for them. One day, one day they'll be able to see them again. We, I, we still got, I still got the big, a big record. And uh, I don't know if that's, uh, it's one of the records where we uh, blocked out Michael Jackson, like, out of number one. And we got two two big records and Billboard. And really? I, Ice Cube blocked out uh, Michael Jackson. And it's on the History album. Yeah. And that, that's one of the records I like. I like that record. That's dope. That's that's dope. So like I said, we got some wall space here, man. So if you want to loan us one or two, go. Come on, did, man. We, we don't live off of trophies, man. We make new ones. But we are, are a historical Let's show. Let's make some new ones. We yeah. talk about the Where the callers past, at? Present. Where the callers at? Yeah. <laughs> Where the callers at? Story too. So let's 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 so let's talk about Souls of Mischief. So we're gonna go into some 93 Infinity, but Souls of Mischief. So when you went from Taj mm -hmm. and a the Ruthless plus, A plus. A plus and then Dale, mm -hmm. were you part of the Souls of Mischief situation? No, that or came are, later. They, they just kind of went and did their thing, and then, right. and then that came did, later. did Tajay and A Plus and Dale know each other? Yeah. They knew each other before that. They went to well, school together, know. right? When, when, when Dale used to come visit Cube, I lived down the street. So he used to come and just be with me and come yeah. kick it with me because okay. Dale is weird. So I'm kind of weird, too. So we got along. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we we got along, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Like he's in the, his comic books, or he was in whatever. He, he wasn't gangster at all. No, 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 no. Del Del Del's not like that, and um, I'm I'm not like that. Yeah. So uh, we we kind of got along, and then um, Dre uh, uh, gave me like hundred and fifty dollars for uh, the guys to come down and make a demo. So Dre paid for that, and uh, they caught the bus down and. We worked on a whole bunch of music together, and uh, that's when uh, um, Taj and Adam was there. And then, you know, Dale went on to do his uh, record or whatever he was working on. And then from that point, it was like some misunderstandings in there, and I, I was kind of like out of the picture after that. Okay, and then was you... So after that, you heard what they did with 93 to Infinity. Oh, man, and I was, and it was like, I was like a happy dad. Happy man. dad. I God, man, it was like 15... 12, 15 years old, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I really thought I was doing some, like, Puff Daddy kind of stuff. I was taking pictures, doing graphics. And, Jermaine Dupri, yeah, Puff Daddy type, right? Yeah, Jinx Dupri, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very proud of, uh, of these guys. And uh, and the funny thing is, as you see that logo right there. Yeah. Um, back in the day, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it really, but when we made up the Mass Circle situation, uh -huh. that was supposed to be the logo. Wait, so that... Hieroglyphics logo was supposed to be Matt Circle's logo, right? And the three was, eyes and the, and the mouth or whatever. Look at it. So you created? No, Dale did. 
Oh, and he did it for them, and then they, and no, it, Dale did it for Cube because oh. it was supposed to be Cube in a mass circle. Oh, and then Cube changed it to Lynch Mob because they said it in Express Yourself. Yes, and WA is the Lynch Mob. Mm. So then they changed it. So then that didn't work. So he kept it and used it for himself. But if you look at it, it's a mad circle. That's crazy because that right there is one of those iconic hip hop logos. And it's on T-shirts. They're about to do a high road day. Right. Every year they do it or whatever. And that's based around their logo but, but and their how, crew. How stuff progresses is, is, is what we're talking about. Yes. Like, Everything ain't always what it seemed to be. It's know? not. That's and why I like doing these shows, to talk right. to people that was there right. to actually explain it. Nobody will never know that story. Wow. But they know now because they, oh, yeah. they listen to this show right yeah, now. They're going to know it now. Hell yeah. So let's get into 93 to infinity, man. This is Souls of Mischief, man. We got Sir Jinx in the building. Yeah, White yeah. Label Radio. Let's get it, man. This is White Label Radio. Classic hip-hop from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Make sure you follow us at White Label Radio. That was Souls of Mischief, Never No More. We still got Sir Jinx in the building. I'm still here, man. And we talking about... Cooking some french fries, Right? <laughs> Eat some food, man. Let's we doing food. our thing, man. And, um, you know, I really appreciate you coming. Thank you, brother. And um, like I told you off air, we try to celebrate the cast that kind of did it from the photographers to the producers, the behind the scenes guys, because you guys are, was the architects of the things that I enjoy. So I, I, like I said, I want to thoroughly thank you for coming through or whatever. So this is the part where, what are you doing now? What's, what's new? What you got going on now? Uh, man, I'm, I'm just enjoying life, man. You know, if something comes along, like I say, like when we was talking about the America's most, you know, I don't plan all the time yeah. because I like to be surprised. Uh -huh. And sometimes when I'm just planning on something, I'm not surprised. And um, I work with a lot of people. You know, I've been dealing with my guy, Rodney O, um, dealing with Mellow Man, Ace, okay. um, Deadly Threat, King T, you know, Brother Jay from X-Clan. Shout out to all my, my guys out there. But, uh, you know, we just waiting on this parade to pass. This way that the music is going, this parade is, is something I really don't, I don't understand. I, I get it. But I, I don't have to watch it. Yeah. So yeah. I can wait. You know, I didn't, you know, shout out to Herbie Hancock and other people like that, that, that would, you know, that withstood the, the test of time. And that's what I'm going through. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I, I believe that at one point they're going to listen to my music differently because they can't get it the way it was, it was being presented. Yeah. And we listen to Herbie Hancock or we listen to... You know, um, um, uh, other 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 producers that that's out there. It's a parade that's going past, and I'm sure you see it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, that's I, a great way to put it. It's a parade, and it's going to pass, and then right. you're going to be able to do your get back to the right. regularly scheduled program. Well, the people are going to not want to see that parade no more. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here waiting, like, oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, it's been about four years. Okay, you guys been on this on this for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but it's not giving nothing back. You know, well, I used to love the diversity in hip hop on how hip hop, you can have your nerds. You can yeah. have your gangsters. You yeah. can have your your uh, your mods. You remember the mods back yeah, in the day? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can have them guys. Yes, you know, yes. you can have everybody can be in their own thing. But everybody is not going to survive in the same world. That's true. That's true. It's not going to, it's not going it's not good. Yeah. And that's what I used to always say when people say, I can make music. And I say, what kind of music? They say any kind of music. Yeah. I said, nobody can make any kind of music. You can't have a country guy, a Jamaican guy, a police officer, and a doctor in the same place liking the goddamn same music. You can't do it. <laughs> somebody going to fight somebody. You yeah, know, yeah. now if you could just make a whole record about doctors and being a nurse and candy striper, you might be on to something. <laughs> so I know exactly where we could play it at. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. feel me? Of but, course. Right, right. Of but course. you can't be at all. And that's where hip hop is is too mixed together right now. We need some more diversity. We and that's one thing. Separate. That's why we do 80s and 90s and right. early 2000s because it was diverse. We can have a brand new Beans and we can have an Ice Cube. Right. And we can, like, Rap City and Yoji Rap was dope because you see King T and you see Black Moon. Right. All in the same episode. I like that. You I, know? I, I wasn't something that was trying to push an agenda. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of guys, uh, rappers, women, like, you know, with the Jermaine Dupree situation, they're pushing an agenda instead of being an entertainer. 
you want to entertain somebody entertain them but don't push no agenda on me don't make me try to believe that you are that guy yeah. that's not what I want to believe I didn't listen to Earth Wind and Fire to believe that they were really those guys it was entertainment it was entertainment yes I didn't take that we I I, I, I let them go. Yeah, I let it go. Yeah. And then, we, you know, shining star. I, I didn't be like, does he really see a shining star? So, like, you, so do you think the youth got, taking it too literal. got it messed up by taking it too literal? When right. they say I shot somebody, they go out and shoot somebody and put it on IG Live. Right. right. As opposed to Cube talking from a second person, I seen this happen and telling the story that's of me, entertainment. That's me entertaining. Yes. Shooting somebody is pushing an agenda. Yeah, yeah. So if all these rappers are pushing an agenda, they're going to be whack rappers. Yeah. And that's just how I look at it. They could be mad all they want. And they're like, oh, this is our style. You just an old head. Yeah, but I sold millions of records. So at the end of the day, are you selling millions of records with, with how you're not being an entertainer? You're yeah. pushing a line on people. And with the girls, and I'm not saying ain't nothing wrong with stripping. Everything is good. But now the whole game, I'm, I'm like... I Everybody's was a, a I was at a club rapper. one night, and I'm like, if everybody in here a dope dealer, who's selling drugs on the street? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if y'all are here, who out there doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody in the club a dope dealer. I'm yeah. like, oh, you see every girl in here a stripper. And I'm like, is, is that what you need to get attention? That's pushing an agenda. And and we you know go back to the, you shout out to Queen Latifah and you know Moni Love and you know yep. they they want to be sassy as they want to be, but at the end of the day it's just sometimes it's too much. Yeah, yeah. And we're at the point where much. the parade is too much, and I, I can't play it. I mean, even some of the stuff back in the day, I kind of like shunned too. Like ah, that that might be a little bit too much to be bumping in my car. My music is loud as hell. Yeah. I'm going to get a ticket playing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that was then. We was kids. But right now, there is no middle section for the music. I mean, you got your J. Cole's. You got your, you know, Kendrick Lamar's and stuff like that. You got but look, they, they you still got, new. You have, new. You have some other people out there. I mean, if you got you to dig. Like, Little Brother just dropped a new album or whatnot. So, uh, oh, there's... Okay. There's, there's, that's to do that's, with that's, Kanye, right? No, nah, little brother was uh, Ninth Wonder in uh, out of North Carolina. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. they would Kanye a little bit, uh, they was out here somewhere. They, they, years they, ago. They, they, they was out here way back in the day. Right, yeah, right, right, they, right. They got right. back together. So yeah, it's, it's some people out there. But I, 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 I agree with you. We do need that middle point. So in the me so in the meantime, you're you're just kind of sitting back watching the parade go by, and then right. you're gonna get back in the fold and do your thing. Once I never stop doing music. So you still producing and whatnot? Oh man, I'm. I'm Whenever I feel it, because I don't, I don't produce music to just make it. Yeah. You know, that's like making 20 pancakes for no fucking reason. When you're hungry, gonna... when you're hungry, you make pancakes. Nah, it's just, it's just like you're not going to make 20 of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, whenever I cook, I don't, I'm not even hungry anymore. Yeah, you know, so yeah. when I make beats and I, I work on tracks, it's not for an outcome. It's just for me to complete a, a process, like yeah. a, 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 a serum that I want to complete and I, I don't know if some producers can understand what i mean like it's not that i want it to sell it's not that i'm trying to sell it to somebody it's like oh, okay well i'm gonna use this progression and use it against this tempo yeah. and maybe see if i can kind of make something happen with me be creative yeah right right yeah, yeah, but yeah. i don't be like oh i can sell this to jay-z you gonna uh, like this I got track you. I, got I, you. I don't i don't make beats like I that you. You that'll make me go into a mind block I got you. So it's more of a feeling. If you feel it, you do it. If not, right. then F it. I can do it on the spot. Dope. Dope. Like so, Kobe. Like Kobe. Kobe can play basketball probably on the spot. Yeah, right? Yeah, sink <laughs> still, them on you. Sink still, them on still you. Got still, got still got it. 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 So now that <laughs> America's Most Wanted is 30 years old. Yeah. And you look back. And I actually, you know, you see what people are talking about and how it is one of, you know, say arguably one of the greatest records of all time. Does that make you smile? Like one of your kids going off to college or being a, a, a great individual? Does that look back on your time and say, wow, I, I was part of history? I'm not too happy because I meant to do it. Okay. So some people are so happy because they didn't know. They stumbled upon it and said, right, oops, right, oh, right, wow, right. I did no, it. No, I meant to do We We meant to do that. That was your destiny. Right, right. We, we wouldn't see, oh. oh. But even, even that, could you guys have imagined it being as large? Because, I mean, of course you say, Everything you do is great. You, you expect to hit that shot. Right. 
But do you expect to hit the shot like Kawhi did where it bounced around the rim and on the backboard <laughs> and then you went you go to the finals? I mean, nah, ours went straight in. That's what I'm saying. So you was ex- so America's one. So it was you, a process. We it was the same process. You mapped it out and you like shit. This is what well, it is. well, not really mapping it out because we didn't really know. We just yeah. came off of all those good situations. I got you. So how could it fall from here? We can so only why, go up. So why didn't the other albums do the same thing then? They did. Not at that level though. Yes, they did. America's Most Wanted doesn't have the cultural impact. Uh, I mean, actually, I mean, what you I mean, death certificate, death certificate, and Killer Will doesn't have the cultural impact that America, America's Most Wanted well, has. Well, that's to you. I mean, because there's, there's three more records. What was the uh, Predator? Yes. Predator actually yep. is the highest selling one. I mean, selling wise, I mean, of course, because he'd be commercially successful. Well, we I'm kept saying, going up. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm saying, I'm, <laughs> but I, I'm, 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 but my thing is like, I'm talking about the cultural impact, the impact you have on hip hop as a whole. It wasn't as many rappers then either. America was one and had that in it. But it wasn't that as many rappers to compete with. I got you. So, so as we kept going, there was more rappers that came out and we was competing with the rappers that was already out. Okay. So some of the songs had a bigger impact because there was less competition. People can consumed them more because they had less to consume. Right. So it hit them more because me, I, I can listen to America's Want, America's Most Wanted for three or four months right. without anything else coming out right. of substance. Because you, you just got off a brand new Beans album. A- you just exactly. got off a third bass album. And now... And, and, that, and you, it's, it was no more records. That makes sense. Because then during that time with other ones, it was like your album came out and then next week somebody else came out. Same day somebody else came out and you had all this stuff to consume. I mean, you probably went to the real Compton City G's or, yeah. you know, the Easy e situations or, um, uh, you know, you had the uh, Do or Die, you yeah. know, those guys. I was yeah. in Memphis or uh, Houston. Chicago. Right, right. Chicago. Right, right, right. Yep, yep. And then you had people placing their they marks. Yep. But at the end of the day, you got to enjoy their record. Yes, yes. You enjoy Nas record, his yeah. first record. You enjoyed it. Yep. And you enjoyed it for a long time before something else came right, to right, right, right. bump you out. That I makes sense. And all, that all makes this sense. Stuff that was that going on. Sense. It was so spread out that your area that you were at had to get the record yes so you there was no way for you to hear it it was no outlet like oh that new no your your, your record store was on point it had it yes first yes. day yes yes first day came out hey and they introduced out. it to stuff that you didn't know nothing right, about like oh right. yeah get this fat boy album because it's dope and right, then you right, got it right, because right. your guy behind the counter was a was and, a, and, and where it was placed at, it was so small because yeah. it was R and B uh, and adult contemporary, yeah, and yeah, yeah. country, rock and, and roll, and, or whatever. Uh, our, ours was like slim. Yeah, like, you just yes. pick. Oh, ooh, Salt and Pepper got a new record. Yeah, <laughs> and that was it. That's how I did. I, I said, <laughs> "Oh, this must be dope because it's right here, and it wasn't that many to pick from." So right, right. That right, actually right, makes right, sense. Right. Look at you enlightening me. Oh, there man, you go. We, Look at we, you. That's we over here. My shot. I told there we you. go. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. So, so before we get out of here, let us let everybody know where we can find you. You on social media. Uh, websites, whatever. Oh man, you know you can check me out on my my um, what's it Instagram. I'm not really an Instagram person. I'm a really private person, but I, I try to post stuff because kids be telling me like they 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 love seeing me act crazy or something like that. So <laughs> DJ Sir Jinx uh, on Instagram. Okay. And uh, you know I, I got a bunch of stuff coming, but you know what? I would rather have it more developed, and then we can do this again, and then I'll be like, okay, yeah. Okay. I don't want to p- throw something out there prematurely. And, yeah, and um, I can't say that because it's my name involved. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to jinx you. I, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I like it to be good. I, I, I like your energy. I like what we're talking about. Um, you see Rodney O calling me. Uh, we got to get him in here. So, uh, so yeah, now, yeah. so now we got to get Rodney. Cause o we in. broke the ice because yeah, most yeah. people be scared of these podcasts because people be like, "Oh, we got this porno picture of you." Nah, be like, nah. Whoa, we, whoa, we, whoa. We doing, we doing some fun hip hop <laughs> stuff. We gonna have some fun, man. So. I want to, I want to, like I said, once again, I want to thank you for coming in here, man. I know hey, I gave you, a, me, I gave you a hard time and you actually proved me wrong and did your thing, man. I, 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 up, I, man. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Um, um, you got the nice equipment in yep, here. You yep. guys is doing we it. We trying, man. man. I'm shoot, I, like you said, I'm shooting my shot. Shoot your shot. I'm Jack. shooting. I'm shooting my shot. Shoot your so, shot. Uh, and don't look back. This is White Label Radio. Thank you, Sir Jinx, for coming through, man. Let's get into some more music and info. Drop that shit, man. Yeah, yo. <laughs>